Uh, welcome back, my dear students. How are you all? I wish all of you are doing well and uh, enjoying your time. Um, yes, I have received that uh, there is a repetition, like is repeated, video one and video three. Actually, there was a video from the half of it. It was like um, I just kept the board. I thought I put uh, pause, but I didn't pause. So it continue like uh, wasting a big part of the video. For that reason, I cut it and re-upload it back. So this is the problem. If it is, it's like, yes, it's uh, repeated. But in the next, uh, on the following videos, I will give more examples about the proportions. I will assert, I mean, assure on some points which you consider is very important with you, for you as well. Please don't hesitate to contact me if you didn't understand if uh, something is vague, like, like something is not clear. If you need any questions regarding anything, if you have some ideas, like as example, um, maybe like the board is not enough or not big behind me, I'm trying to do my best. Just if uh, the handwriting is something, don't worry. I don't, I don't get angry or upset from my, my students because you guys are like my kids but I welcome any feedback. Whenever there is a feedback, you are very welcome. Uh, our next week, we will have also class, a big class about this, and I will put upload some videos for the next week. Uh, so you just see the videos very well. See the PowerPoints, the slides. Look at the book uh, of the college, and just you will have examples, semi or exactly the same which we have here almost like what we have here. Please don't copy and paste answers. Uh, it's in, it's in, in math is not that much because it's in other subjects, some students copy and paste. No, please don't copy and paste. I need your mind, your mind to work. I need to see your rule of thumb, the way you are working, how you are working. Not only in math, also in management and any subject I'm teaching either in the college or in other colleges. So this is what I want you to do. Uh, today, this video is regarding examples only. It's a general review for the uh, proportions and ratios. And this is a very important video for you as well. Of course, I will put also another videos for from the YouTube that will help you to understand what the meaning of proportions and what the meaning of the ratios. And the problem is not in the proportions and ratios only, no. The, how to apply it, how to apply this work when we are working uh, in commercial applications, like in business, how we can get benefit of the proportion and the ratios, how we will get benefit in business from this work. Let's go today, let's go for the slide 38 first. I will um, uh, share the screen. Let me share the screen. Then, yeah. Okay. Let us go to the uh, page 38 on chapter one and two, which you have here in this thing, in, the, um, uh, in your notes. And let's go and see, check out uh, how it will work like, what we want from here. So he's talking about, as example, let us see this example and let's do, take what's in it, like the data, which we will use. He's saying, he's saying, what percentage knee increase did Nyard Walker received, this is the name of a man, receive if he, if her bi-weekly, she's a woman, bi-weekly salary uh, rose from, 800, 800 to 800 to uh, 920, from 800 to 920. Okay, to 920. Okay, so I need to know what is the origins? What is the origin? The origin was 800. Let us see here. The origin was 800. The salary, the origin salary was 800. That's fine. Now this 800, this 
this 800 become to 920 becomes 920 i just want to see the percentage how much now did it increase okay let me do a go to the solution i will put the um, uh stop the share now for the moment so you can see this the 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 um uh, the board behind me now i think what is the percentage of increase like okay the old let us say the old was 800 the origin now i was take i was taking 800 dollars now i'm taking 920 dollars how much is the increase then i will count the increase or the decrease increase equals the new minus the old so 920 minus 800 that will give me 120 dollars okay that's fine then for putting the percentage of increase or decrease percentage of increase or decrease that will equal the size amount of increase or decrease, which is 120 divided by the origin amount, the origin amount, the origin amount. So I'll check out 120 based on the origin amount, how much it is. Then I will see this in percentage. That's fine. Okay. That's fine. So you see here, it's now 120 based on 800, 120 based on 800. That will give me 15%. It will give me 15%. Actually, the second example is the same as the first example, number 39. Look at this. Expenditures of government program were reduced from 75,000, okay, to 60,000, right? What percentage change here? Actually, to the same one, like the one before. The old minus the new, or the new minus the old, divided by the old. This is how I will get it. I will take the data here as well, but I will put here the sign minus, because I need to put the sign minus. Anyhow, I will stop the screen, I will stop sharing so that the board will be clear for you guys and actually i like this way because the students will understand more here is the board so the example was seventy six thousand. the example was uh the amount was uh 75 the origin was seventy five thousand. let's see the origin was 75,000. And the new amount is reduced into 60,000. That's right, great. And I want to know how much is the increase or the reduce? How much should be the increase or the reduce? That's fine. The old amount was 75. The new amount is 60. Okay, okay. That means that if I say the new, let me go on the, on the rule like this, new minus old or origin. Let it be simply like this so that you will understand it. New minus origin on divided by the origin. So the new is 60,000 minus the old, is 75,000 divided by the old, which is 75,000. Some students say, hey, hey, he didn't do it like this. He did the nomination alone, and he did the new denomination alone. While you are doing all in one step, I just want you to understand that the rule here is the new minus the origin based on the origin, divided by the origin. So here will be minus 15, thousand but minus why minus because because it is reduced from 75 into 60 it is down divided by the origin which is 75 thousand 
can you tell me? But the book in the example, there is no minus. Minus is telling you the direction. So from the minus, you will know, did it increase or did it decrease? This is how the minus work. It's working for that reason. So you will tell me, okay, I will go on the answer of the book or your answer, it's both are the same. If you do this, but the minus, the minus, the signal of the minus shows that the amount is decreased in this case. Okay. So when we divide them 15 by 75, it will give me 20%. Okay. Then it will give me equals. Let's see. Equals minus 20%. You will tell me, hey, hey, what the minus? Because minus by positive will give a minus. That means that the expenditures, the governmental expenditures, is reduced, is down 20%. Mean the government reduce its expenditures on the people 20% down. Okay, the minus, the minus signal, this minus. Okay. Let's go to flip to the other question, which is on page 40, actually, and go there. Uh, I will share the screen back and go to page 40. Page 40, slide number 40. Slide number 40, this was 39, okay. We have something in 39? Yes, we have something in 39. So, so sorry, we will bring 39. And check what's there on 39. Let's see what goes on on 39. I had an example before like this, and I will repeat it back. An electronic calculator marked 39.95. So the calculator's price is $39. It's thirty-nine dollars minus point point ninety-five. This is the real price. In an Ontario back stores in its suburbs, thirteen percent HST, one three percent HST. The HST in Canada, because you guys are maybe you don't know, the HST is the taxes. This is the taxes here. It's almost like thirteen percent. Okay, so you pay taxes for anything you will buy here. Like if you will buy a, anything, you will pay this 13, one, three, 13% taxes. It's called HST. Okay, uh, harmonized sales taxes. And this is harmonized sales taxes. So H for harmonized, S for sales, and T for taxes. Okay, uh, that what will the cost be, the total cost, you want the total cost. So the total cost, all the cost which you will, you, it's logically, you will pay, this is the origin plus the tax. Okay, so you will pay total equals, let me uh, make the screen stop share for the moment so that the board will be clear. Here we go back. We said, the price of the calculator, which you will buy, is $39.95. Okay, and you will pay as well, plus the taxes, which you will pay. So both of them total will be the, the price, plus taxes. That's fine. Plus price, plus the taxes. That's fine. Okay, then this will be, the price is $39.95. It's the price plus the taxes. The taxes is 13% from the price. So plus what? 13% of the real price, which is 39.95. Look at this. The price plus the 13% of the price. 13% of the 39.95. Okay. So this is the total price. When you finish this operation, how you will do it? You have first to multiply 0.13, which is 13%, 0.13, 0.13, by 39.95. Then after you finish this operation, 
the multiplication, you will add the sum, the output with 39.95. So the priorities of the transactions. First, you will finish the multiplication, the multiplication first. Then after that, you will go to add this into the 39.95, and this will give you the total sales price, which is, uh, I believe it will be, uh, 45.14, 45.14, 45 equals, equal, Yeah, equal 45.14. And this is how we will solve this question. I hope that you get it understand it, guys. Now we will go to share the screen to check out another example. Uh, you have example, I want you to do this because it's exactly like the one before. Exactly the same idea and the same, uh, uh, the same uh, idea that it's a part of the taxes plus a part of the taxes is what the, the price plus the taxes. Let's go to page 40. Okay, that's fine. We'll check out page 40. I'm sorry for the time is wasted in this, um, the slides, so enlarge the slides, but it's okay anyhow, as long as you understand, that's fine. Page 40, number V, that's fine. Uh, so number V is telling me, the consumer price index of July of this year was 125, which is 120% of the uh, appendix of 10 years ago. Okay. What were the index 10 years ago? This is very nice. Now we say the consumer price index of July was this year was 125. Let's take the data here. Then go for solution. Okay, the, part, the, the, the consumer CPI, the CPI, we call it consumer price index of July this year was 125, read, 125. Okay, and the CPI is indicator for the prices, for the movement of the total prices of a society. It's mixed, a mixture of the whole prices of a society, how it's moving like. Okay, the consumer price index uh, in July of this year was 125, which is 120% of that of 10 years ago. Okay, that equals 120% of 10 years ago. I will signal, I will give a simple for the one 10 years ago with the example X now. So he wanted to know what? What was the index 10 years ago? So he wanted to know X. Okay. He's telling me this year, this is the, the, the CPI this year or July this year, CPI now, let us say now, was 120, X of 10 years ago. So X means for it's a, a variable which because we don't know what is the X then. Okay, 10 years ago. Then I want to know what was the CPI. This is the CPI 10 years ago. We make it with the this thing X. Okay, I want to know the X. How was the CPI 10 years ago? How was it? How was it looks like? Okay, I said before, I need the variable. 
I just need this variable. So x, which is a variable, is equal. The far, the far is 125. By the near, the near is 120. Again, the far, which on the other side of the equilibrium, when you pass the equation, 125, divided by the near, which is 120. Okay, that's what comes to, let's see in the example, how it is, the result of, it is, okay. Would notice that, I just wanna show you something. I just wanna show you something. This is 120%, like we said, 120%. How will I get rid of the 120%? 120, when you say percent, means by 100. Again, 120% is like this. So when you divide it, it will be 1.2. It will be 1.2. So let me do it back in front of you totally from the start itself. I know the board is small, but we try our best till I change this board with a long one, with a big one. Now, first of all, he's saying 125. Now, the CPI now is 125. This is one of equals now, now equals 120% of the CPI from 10 years ago. This is CPI 10 years ago. It's fine. Then I want, I want to know how was the X or the CPI 10 years ago. Then CPI or X 10 years ago equals 125 divided by 120%. The reason I did this, like I'm telling you, when I want to do the X, get the X, which is symbol for the CPI from 10 years ago, will equals the far divided by the stuck to the variable. Okay, so, now I want you to know what is the meaning of 120. We said this before, but I will repeat it back. I will repeat it back here in this piece. 120% equals, we can do it like this, 120 by 100. Okay, that means it will come to, when I move the zero with the zero, or you can do it with the calculator, it will give you 1.2 it will give you 1.2. So X here means 125 by 1.2 equals, this equals, let us see the final results will be what? The final result here will be 104.2, 104.2, 2. So what do we mean by 1.402 here? What do you mean by 1.402, this number? 1.402, this number, okay? What do we mean by it? We mean by it that this was the CPI 10 years ago, which I'm looking for, the CPI from 10 years ago. Okay. That's fine. This was page 40. Let's go to another example on page 41 and see what 41 is talking about. We'll share the screen, sorry about that. This is, uh, it's the same idea of increase or decrease, uh, like we had it once before, but we can repeat it here back. Uh, solve each of the following. I will leave it actually for you to do it because it's the same idea which we talked about before. Uh, solve each of, 
unit sales of August were 5% more than of July. So July equals, uh, August equals July plus 5% of July, of August. If August unit sales were 76, like this, blah, 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 because July would be like this. So here would say X plus 5% of X will equal 76, zero to zero. Then we want the X alone, okay? So I will keep the X and move that number to the other side. 5%, X and 5% means one, both of them, one X and 5% of X. Both of them will be 1.5% of X equals this amount. Then X will be the far, the far by the near. So it will be 76 point this, this amount by 105. And this is the solve of the problem. So, uh, I just want you to do it because it's the same idea which I talked before. It's nothing, nothing new in this, nothing new in this. So I want you to do it with your hands. And if you have any problem, just tell me. Now, the units, the sales for August were 5%, more than July. Okay. Okay, then, uh, if August unit sales was 76, this is six, including X plus 5.X, 5% of X. Like this, I will say, I will say like this, Uh, the sales of August is uh, the sales of August were 5% more than for the July. Okay, then August is August is August is X plus 0.05 X. This is August. Because he's saying, and this amount was, this amount was 76020. This amount was 76020 dollars. Let me stop sharing. So that the screen in front of you, okay. is July. Let's see. X is July. And August is July plus 5% of July. I want to know what about July? I know about August. So August is 76,020. Okay. Then what I will do here Again, let me do it in front of you, but I need the data on one side, 5%, and I'll do it back. That's enough. Simply, he's saying this is August sales. August sales is 76020, okay? And August sales equals July sales plus 5% of July, extra. July sales plus 5% of July, extra. Then August sales will equal X plus 5% of X. X plus 5% of X, okay? Okay, then August equals 1.05 X. Okay, I have August already. I have already August, which is seven, six, zero, twenty dollars will equal 1.05 X. Then X will equals the far 
by the near 76020 by 1.05. Then it will equals the amount will equals like what we have here. Uh, what we have here, it will be seven to four hundred and four hundred and sixty. Seven to four hundred and sixty. Seven to four hundred and sixty dollars. And that's how you will solve it. It's very easy and very simple, and an idea, a same idea of what we talk about before. Uh, now we'll go to another idea, which is an 41, and about the currencies we're talking here. I will share the screen now for you guys to see. Okay. So this is pro properly the, the relationship between, as example, the Canadian dollars and the US dollars. So if one US dollars equals 1.247 Canadian dollars, you can use the converter. Like if I say $100, Americans will equals 100. If I say as example, as example, let's go like this. Let's say that one US dollar One US dollar will equals 1 1.724, 1.247, 1.247 Canadian, CDN, Canadian dollar. Okay. If I want to get 100 US dollars, if I want to say how much will get 100 US dollars, 100 US dollars, you guys all know this, US dollars will equals 100 divided by 1.247 Canadians, which will be move the decimal point because this is 100, two digits to the right, 124.7 Canadian CDN. And that's it. Uh, it doesn't help here so much. I don't need this so much now for the moment. But actually I need it on the next advantage, on the next point, which is the appendix. I will show you the appendix. Page 46, and that's what I need. Yeah, this is a very important page, please. I want you to know it. And because you might get example, or you might get it as a question target. So if the questions, by the way, of the exams and the assignments, it will be the same ideas which we take here. We won't bring something so far or so complicated, only just with changing the numbers. But others, all the questions which I'm giving you here, is the same exactly, no more, no less. So this is 40, slide number 46. Yes. Okay. If I want to get, as example, look at this now in front of you on the screen and it's in the book as well. So you can get it from the screen, from the, from the slides, just enlarge the slides. I'm sorry for about the slides because it came to me like this. So what you will do here, it just enlarge this slide so it will be appear in front of you because if you get it in the exam or in assignments or quizzes or whatever, or home assignment, the same thing with a change in the numbers. I won't change these numbers, but I will change to you the numbers in the exam. Like what is example? First, to find exchange from the Canadian dollars into the Swiss francs. You know what you will do? Let us see an example. You will go like this on the column till you get the number of the Swiss, the Switzerland. Then you will, okay, let's see. As example, I just want to enlarge it more than this so that it will be like you guys can see it very clear the numbers because i need the numbers to be yeah okay 
Now, like this is very clear. First, find the exchange. He is saying locate the Canadian dollars column in the table. That's fine. Move down to the Canadian dollars like this. I will move like this way till I come to the uh, what he needs the uh, Swiss the Swiss. Uh, Okay, here we go. If I want to get the conversion of convert 55 Canadian dollars into Swiss francs, okay? Convert 55 Canadian dollars into Swiss francs. So like I told you, what we will move, we will move here in the Canadian dollars, Canadian dollars till we come down into the Swiss francs. We will move in the Canadian dollars till we go down to the Swiss francs. So I need 55 Canadian dollars. Okay, don't move this way. You move vertical, like the column from up to down. I need what I need from Canadian dollars, from Canadian dollars to Swiss francs. So I move like this from Canadian dollars to Swiss francs where they intersect, where they meet each other, here. So from Canadian dollars into Swiss francs, that's it. I need to change 55, 55, look at my, the prompt here, 55 Canadian dollars into Swiss francs. Okay, the convert is how much? The convert factor is 0 0.7545, that's fine. Then to finish this, It basically depends on the schedule. So you have to be very aware of how you will work. Otherwise you will make a mistake. Again, I'm saying, let me repeat it back. To convert from Canadian dollars, Canadian dollars into Swiss francs, I will move vertical like a column up to down. Canadian dollars into, into uh, Switzerland, uh, the, uh, Swiss, uh, Swiss francs, which is this one. Okay, 55 divided by or applied by, it will be 55 Canadian dollars, 55 Canadian dollars will be multiplied by the coefficient variable, which is 0 0.754, 0 0.754. 0.754, you can add the five. This will equals the amount which he gave me here, which is $41.5. dollars dollars Sorry about that. $50. Dollars. So I will stop share. Here to appear on the screen, I move down on the Canadian dollars till I meet the Switzerland franc. The conversion variable is 0.754. The coefficient of converting is 0.754. Means one Canadian equals 0.754 Switzerland franc, Swiss franc. So $55 will be the multiplied by 0.74, it will give me 41.50 dollars. So please don't forget uh, how you will move how you will move here. Now let's go to 47 slide. one more and this is also is a very important one which we need to know very well what do you mean by the index number the index number in general tell us the price of the movement of the prices in general 
as the price is going up or the prices are going down. It gives us the trend, the trend of the prices, where it's going. If there is an inflation, and you will know from the economic that the inflation means prices of goods and services become higher, not lower. Or <coughs> if the prices come down, or the prices coming down means it's called recession or deflation. This happened when the prices go down. So the CPI or the consumer price index is telling me the movement of the prices of goods and services. When societies face problems like wars, like starvation, like problems like any kind of economic problems, usually happen inflation where the prices go up. Or when there is a recession like 2008, when everything is locked down, shut down, like I'm now in the COVID time, there is a recession. Means people are not able to buy any more goods and services, so the prices go down. Okay, so here we say, the index number is this one which is telling me, we compare two years. As example, the price of text was, uh, the textbook was $115 in, in uh, 2012. Okay, and 125 in 2017. Compare them. Okay, I will take the new divided by the old. Very simply, the price in 2017 divided by the price in 2015 equals the price in 2017 is 125.35. The price in 2015 was 115. Just divide them by each other, divide them by each other. This one, 09, which is, I want you 1.09, just remove the decimal point and put percent. Again, 1.09, because there are two numbers, there are two numbers after the decimal points. So, move the decimal points, put the signal of the percent. And that's it. And that's it. Okay. Let me give an example quickly of my own. The price of a house in 2020 is 500,000. The price of the same house in 20, in 2000 was 100,000, or let's say 200, 250,000. Okay, now let's study the movement of prices by the CPI. How it will be the change in prices? Change in a percentage equal. The prices of price of 2020 divided by the price of 2000 will equal 2020 is 500,000 divided by the price of 2000 was 25, 250,000. Those with those, this with this, 50 by 25 will give me two. Means the price is doubled. The prices is doubled two times more. It was 250,000 the house in 2000. Now it became 500,000 in 2020. Wait a minute. You said we will put percent. Yes, you will put percent. Two when you might multiply it by 100, it will give you 200 percent. Me the prices became higher. 200 percent means twice of the price. But in the X example, as example, if it is like this, if you get a fraction, if you get a fraction like this as example, if the output was a fraction, as example, 1.57. As example, 1.57, let's see, 
0.57. Okay, you will remove the decimal point, then you would say 157, then you will put the percentage. That's the increase in prices. So, so don't forget to put, remove the decimal point and put the percentage signal or symbol, and that will be fine. Uh, two, if you get fractions, if you get an integer real number, two, three, four, five, then put beside it two zeros and put the percent. If you get a fraction, move to the decimal points and take the first, the one, the first one on the left and the two after the decimal points and put, remove the decimal and put the percentage like I did here. Again, I would say 1.557, Remove the decimal point, remove this decimal point, then put the percentage mark, and that's it. So we are comparing, like we are comparing the prices in two different years. This is what we are doing, okay? You do it, you, you usually do this every day in your life. Like you say, oh, this from 10 years ago, it was only $5, now it's $10. The price is duplicated. Duplicated is 200%. The word duplicated, when it's doubled, this is 200%. Okay, let's move on now. Uh, to page 49, 48, this is 47. Let's go to 48. 48, what's there in 48, let's see. Let's see what's there on 48. It's a very important example. Very, very important example. We said the purchasing power. Please keep watching this because those are all the materials of your exams, your quizzes, your assignments, your homework. Only it will be different in the numbers. I will, I will give you the same, not the same numbers, but I will give you another numbers and you just calculate it. That's it. That's what you will do. You will know the rules and how to calculate. And why we use the CPI, Consumer Price Index. Why do we use it? What did the mean or what do we use it for? The price, uh, I didn't share the screen, I'm sorry for that. Yes, here now it is. I'm here now on page, on page 49 guys. I'm on page 40, sorry, 48. I'm on page 48. So what do we mean by the consumer price index? What do you mean by it? Consumer price index, CPI, like I told you, it show me the trend of movement in prices. Are the prices going up or the prices are going down? This is what it tell us, prices, CPI is indicator, an indicator. It tell me, it tells me prices are going up or prices are going down. That's how it works. Are the prices going up or the prices is going down? And I use it also for calculating something is called purchasing power. What do we mean by the purchasing power for the CPI? What do we mean by the purchasing power? Purchasing power simply, simply means what money can buy. The purchasing power means what the money can buy. Very simple words, okay? So, let's see now, if I will talk about this example in front of me. In red here, you will see the purchasing power of a dollar equals the whole equation. One by the CPI, by 100. So you will put one in the nomination and you will put the CPI number in the denomination multiplied one 100. Actually the 100 here is to change from decimals into percentage like we said before. And I will repeat it back now. So let's see this example, 3.78 example. The CPI was 1228 for the year 2013. 
and 1 to 5.2 for the year 214. Okay, determine the purchasing power of the Canadian dollar. You know what the meaning of purchasing power? The purchasing power means what the money can buy. Okay, did the purchasing power use or increase? Or let me tell you an example. One dollar you used to buy two pens like this pen for one dollar. Two pens like this pen we used to buy for one dollar. Now we are buying from 10 years ago. Now I, I buy this pen with one dollar. Okay, that means that the purchasing power of the money is reduced into the half. Reduced is down half. Okay, to the half of the purchasing power before. Again, simply, simply out of this example. From 10 years, from 10 years, I used to buy this pen for two pens like this, two of them, two pens for one dollar. Now I buy this one pen for one dollar. So the purchasing power of the dollar from 10 years is double of the purchasing power of the dollar of nowadays. Easy guys, you got it? That's how, to, that's the meaning of it. That's what it means. Okay, let's go to this example. The CPI was 122.8 for 213 and 125.2 for 214. He's determining two years in a serial. Actually, this is stuck the two years, but no gap between them. Determine the purchasing power of the Canadian dollars for the two years. And the interpret, see this is very important. Imper interpret the meaning of these results. It's very important to interpret. So we knew now that the rule is the purchasing power equals one by the CPI divided by 100. Okay. Then the first year will win one by one, two, two, eight, which is the CPI for this year divided by 100. This gives me the 0.814. Okay. So if I make it approximated, I will make it like this. Let me do the example in front of you here. Take the numbers and do the example so that will appear to be clear in front of you guys. So the purchasing power was, let's say, the CPI was 122.8, one, two, two point eight, one Two, two point eight in two thirteen in two thirteen one two two point eight in two thirteen and the purchasing power became became uh uh and one two five point two for twenty four fifty. One two five two one two five point two for two forty, right? One two five point two for okay. Then I want to see what is the difference between the purchasing power. So I will stop sharing now for the for you to see. This is for 213, and this is for 240. This is the CPI, and this is the CPI. Okay, so the rule is to get the purchasing power, purchasing power, the rule is equal one by the CPI divided by 100, which is the 100 here actually is to change from decimal into percentage. Okay, so one to, for the first year is 213, whatever, the two years, the first year is as example 213. Uh, yes, 213, PP, purchasing, PP is the purchasing power for 213, will equals 
one by one to two point eight, one to two point eight divided by one hundred. This will give me eighty points eight one four. Okay, this will give me point eight one four. Okay, if you want to round it, if you want to round it, and I need to round it actually, so no need for me to take the four is less than five, then I will just say equals 81.81 when I round it, but I won't multiply in 100. No, I said the 100, I will remove it and put the percentage, then this is the, will be the percentage, 81%. That's how it works, okay? Then it will be 81%. Same thing, I will give you a chance, two minutes to do for 2014. I will consider that you do it for the time of the video. Okay, you done 2014? So 2014, PP will be one divided by one to five point point two multiply by 100 which equals after rounding it it will equals 0 0.97 0 0.79 uh, 0 0.798 which will be 80 because 8 I will round it so 79 will be 80 point 80 which is I will move the decimal point it will be 80 percent when you round it, I'm rounding it. Rounding means I take the third number from the right, the third number from the right. As example, here, the third number from the right is four. Okay, this four is more or less than five. Less than five, ignore it, remove it. Like we did here, 81%, we took the first two numbers and this we consider it zero. Then we, we the, the 100 of the multiplication, we didn't multiply 100. What we did is we removed the 100 and we put the percentage and that's it. We put the percentage here, that's it, okay? Same thing we did for the second one. It was 0.798. I don't want the eight. I will remove the third one from the decimal point. I want only two numbers after the decimal. I need only two numbers after the decimal point, okay? So those two numbers, 0 0.7, and this was eight. Eight is more or less than five, is more than five. Then it will go to the next. So 79 will be 80. And this we call the round, rounding. So we round it. Okay, the purchasing power here was 81%. Let's see how is the results. Okay, the purchasing power was, uh, the means of the dollar was, could purchase only 81% of what it could purchase in 22 on 2-2, two, two. okay? The dollar could purchase even less amount, 79% of what it could purchase in 2002. So that means, that means I was, 81, I became 80, that means the purchasing power is reduced, is down, not more. That means the money is weak, exactly. I was buying this two pence for one dollar, two pence, one dollar, from 10 years ago. Now I'm buying only one pen for one dollar this year. That means the purchasing money the purchasing power of the money is down. Okay, guys, we'll go now to the page 49. And see what is there. On 49, oh, this is very, very important too. Very important application. Uh, some of you guys, when you join um, some universities, and even if you didn't like 
if we, we will stop only on the college level um, education, and that's good as well. Both are very good. Um, some of you guys might need to know, what do you mean by real income and what do you mean by nominal income? Nominal, I'm taking money. Okay, but what does the money buy? What can the money buy? We don't care about the nominal. We care about the real income. What we care about is the real income, not the nominal income. Okay, how can I solve this problem? Is there a convert between something to switch from the real to the nominal, nominal and from the nominal into the real? Yes, yes, there is. There is a relationship, it's telling me what? There is a relationship between the nominal and the real income. Let's go to see it. And it's very important. Please, this class is very important for your assignments, for your quizzes, is very, very important. So here the relationship is real income. Let's see, real income equal nominal income divided by the CPI. What is the CPI? The consumer price index. So the real income equals the nominal income divided by the CPI. If I give you as example, let's see any example. Let's see an example. Let's see the example of the book. For me, I will just change the numbers. That's it. Let us see here. This is a good example, I guess. We'll go through it and see. Okay. Is uh, James' income was fifty thousand in two thousand fifteen and fifty three thousand in two thousand eleven and fifty in two thousand fourteen. Canadian CPI was like this in 2011 and 125.2 in 2014. The CPI uh, base year in 2012, that's fine. Determine GEMS real income. So the real income is the nominal income divided by, uh, he's saying in 211, in 211. So I will take it, the CPI of 211. The real income will equal the nominal income, which was 53,000, 53,000, divided by the CPI in 2011. Real income in 2014, we'll check out the nominal income in 2014, how much it was. Uh, it was 56,000 in 2014 by the uh, CPI of 2014, which is 125.2. So what I want to tell you here, for the same year, so the nominal income divided by the CPI of the same year which we are working on, okay? With the, with the, with the CPI of the same year which we're working. The idea is you take the nominal income, divided by the CPI, Consumer Price Index, to give you the real income, okay? But for the year you are talking about, okay? For the year you are talking about. So, as example, 53,000 in 2011. This is 53,000 in 2011. And the CPI in 2011 uh, was 111.5. Here he put, the CPI of the same year of 2011. So if you give you more than one CPI, use the CPI and the nominal income of the same years, the similars of the same year, don't change them. Like here you say, as example, 53 in 2011, right? So he took the 53 and divided by, and divided by the nominal, the CPI in 2011. The CPI in 2011, uh, was 
one 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 point five in twenty eleven. Then multiply by one one. By the way, like I'm, t I'm telling you, one hundred percent it give me the percentage. So if the this real or this thing, okay. Here we go. This is an example. I will put an example to simplify of mine just quickly. If I say that the nominal income, nominal income, was, my nominal income was 20, let's say a good number like 54 thousand dollars in 2011 CPI for 2011 equals uh, 540 or let's say yeah 540 let's say like this let's say just assume any numbers okay then the real income will be 54,000 by 540, this is a zero to zero, then this will be 54, it, this means 100. Okay, so here that's how it goes, the nominal, you will take the nominal, divide it by the CPI for the year, and that's it, and just write 100, just write 100. Don't confuse yourself with the percentage, just write 100, that's it. Okay, and the, uh, 